This means that you should do nothing for the homosexual squatter. If the homosexual squatter is not willing to go into a shelter or rehabilitation place to get help and shelter and access to permanent supported housing or resources, then the homosexual squatter is not willing to live apart from the streets. The homosexual squatter wants to live on the streets because living on the streets is more convenient. The person has more authority. The person does not have to comply with authority. The person creates his or her own authority. The person gives the streets more credibility. So the place that you, so place is uh, placed uh, in quotation marks because remember they were using you as a place. They didn't need shelter. They didn't need food. They didn't need sex. They just needed a place. They needed a place to wander, to uh, to uh, to bring chaos, to dwell, to be a vagabond, things like that. They just needed a place to do that. And they could get that through any other uh, woman or any, any other man. People are heavy now in these uh, polyamorous types, um, type situations. They all have dating rotations or whatever because they're trying to secure territorial dominance over the person and their resources so they can make sure that they have whatever they need to have. So in other words, they're looking at all these individual people as uh, parents. The man who has a dating rotation uh, of five women, five women is looking at all of them as parents. The woman who has a dating rotation at, of, of five men is looking at all those men as parents. That's what they're trying to go back to. They're trying to go back to the womb. It's a womb mentality. Because um, why, will you, why do you feel like you always need to go and live with somebody? So the, so the homosexual squatter is not willing. If, if the homosexual squatter, squatter is not willing to go into a shelter or rehabilitation place to get help, and shelter and access to permanent support housing, then the squatter, the homosexual squatter is not willing to live apart from the street. The streets, again, have more credibility. They So the streets can be one street or multiple streets. So one night they sleep on one street, it goes well. Then they sleep on and see if, and then if, if they can't find their same spot again, like the next night, okay, then they have to go to another street. So if another street works well for them, still well for them, okay, Okay, so I got two streets that I can work with. In my mind, I got two streets I can work with. So then if they come, right, and they go back and forth between those two streets, they know they have two options. So then what happens when they don't have the two options anymore, the space is being taken up by other homeless people, then they try to go find another uh, a street. Well, something happens on that street, and they realize that, it's going to be danger for them. And so they say, okay, I can't go to that third street. But then they return to the two street options. And one of the streets is available to pitch their tent. And so as long as they know that they can find a place, they can find a place to pitch their tent, then they are good. They're solid. And as long as there's consistency in that, they can uh pack up their tent make the rounds with the soup kitchens maybe go and talk to uh food stamp office things like that or whatever um then they have productivity for their life and as long as they can come back to the streets to the two main streets that they know work well for them the options uh then they're they're not willing to live apart from the streets i have heard uh, i have seen video documentaries of people who were given a motel to live in, but they wouldn't sleep on the bed. Somehow sleeping on the bed, is it, it, it just felt weird to them. So they would rather sleep on the floor. If you think about Tom Hanks and Castaway, when they finally found him and then they put him in a hotel, a uh, real fancy hotel, that thing looked like a suite. Uh, where did he sleep? He didn't sleep in the bed. He slept on the floor and he kept turning on and off that uh, lamp because his mind was still on the floor, on the ground. And his mind was still in the cave. And no matter what you tried to do to convince him by giving him great surroundings, giving him food and great surroundings and things like that, he was not going to be convinced by that. He was only convinced that sleeping on the ground, sleeping uh, on the floor in that hotel, turning on and off that light 
was the most productive thing that he had going on in his life for the many years that he was cast away on that island. So then he got used to that. Now, did he uh, eventually um, uh, change? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Because when you think about it, he went to go see Kelly and they had their moment. Then he went to go see his friend at his friend's house. Okay. Then he had his moment there. And then later, um, uh, he takes a trip to uh, 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 town with the package that he saved, and he went to uh, find a house, left a note, left the package, and then comes out and he sees a woman, and the woman, a uh, real nice lady or whatever, and then he sees how how the the logo on the package matched the logo on the uh, truck. And so he's at this crossroad, this four-way crossroad about what, what decisions he need to make now. And to me, it would have been better to put him in a house so that he moved from homeless to house. I understand dramatically in terms of film drama, uh, that you leave him at at that crossroad in limbo. Now, does he turn around in the film and he turns around and looks down at the road and realizes that actually may be be the direction he needs to go in? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. But we haven't we haven't by the end of the film established whether or not he can have his own place. He's moving from place to place. Even at the beginning of the film, he is. I think he is living with Kelly. They're supposed to be engaged or something like that. And their engagement was very long. And so in some ways he was a homosexual squatter in her life because why can't you make a decision about, about marriage? And so then when he goes missing and then he's presumed dead, she goes on and marries um, um, her dentist and they have a house and a child and, and, and everything, uh, stability. His death did not create instability in her in the sense that that she knew that she still needed to keep a place. She still needed to keep a house. She still needed to stay in her marriage. Uh, there may have been some uh, some psychological instability because of the way that he was presumed dead, right? But he he managed to do that. But him going him going to and fro on his job, even though he's working his job, that's his career. And then him him going to Kelly's house after he's found, and then the friend's house after he's found, and then the lady's house after, after he's found, and then also the hotel, does not tell me that the situation is left um, stable to me. And um, and at the end, he's still looking for a place. Now this may be an over exaggeration. I'm not calling uh, uh, the Tom Hanks character in Castaway a homosexual squatter uh, because they did give him some money, some work, and uh, I mean, I mean, uh, some money, right? I guess lawsuit or something like that. But it, to me, it would have been good for him to um, meet her, go and meet her, uh, go and date or something like that. But then have him as a character walking into his own apartment with a box and now setting to task to be alive again. To me, that's what that actually would have been better um, um, as a strategy uh, to do, because then it moves him from being, again, it moves him from being homeless to now uh, being able to work again, being able to function again and things like that. Another situation that I realized when I was researching homeless, um, homelessness, chronic homelessness, and I was doing a second master's in psychology that I haven't finished yet. And I don't know when I go back to it. Uh, but the research literature uh, showed me that some homeless people feel homeless in a home. That even though they were able to get permanent supported housing, PSA, uh, PSH, PSH, uh, and it's under the housing first model, even though they were able to get housing, when they finally get housing, they, fe they feel like homeless in the home. Uh, and then they also noted through survey that, that they wish they had gotten some kind of financial counseling about how to 
how to to have a bank account, how how to balance a uh, checkbook, how to live as a non-homeless person. Yeah, there you go. As a non-homeless person, if they had received, they said they suggested had had they received some kind of orientation about that, it would have been it might have been better for them, right? But then they were also noting that many of the uh, the housing was in bad neighborhoods where they were always confronted with drug addicts, uh, prostitutes, things like that. And so again, those are the types of people who are also looking uh, to squat somewhere because if you are in that permanent supported housing, but you're not using it to your benefit to actually get yourself better, then you're basically squatting. Even if you're, even if you are permitted to live there because of the policy, the housing first policy, you're still, you're still essentially a homosexual squatter. So if the person is not willing to go into a shelter, a uh, rehabilitation place, um, and get access to resources, even if they can't get access to permanent supportive housing, then they're not willing to live apart from the streets. That's really what that is. They're not willing to live apart from the streets. And the homosexual squatter wants to live on the streets because living on the streets is just more convenient. Do you know how easy it is is to just stay in the convenient aspects of your adult life than to uh, take a chance, take a risk, and move out of one convenience into um, a better life that you are envisioning yourself? What people like to do is they like to do the extremes. They have a dream of their self that they want to become this. And what they'll do is they either quit the job or not have a job or go straight after the uh, dream, but not have a plan. What I believe is better strategy, keep the job. Keep the job and let the job fund your dream. So do the 8 to 5, do the 10.30 to 7, do the 11.30 p.m. to 8, right? Save, uh, pay your bills, save a fraction of that, right? And put towards your, um, your, um, your dream. So if your dream is to write a book, then write a book when you come home. Or if you are too tired from a night shift, go ahead and get your sleep and then uh, do do um, a chapter or do two or three pages. Do something along the way. Don't put so much um, pressure on you that you have to perform and have a have a chapter. Sometimes it's better to get the dialogue. Sometimes it's better to work on the dialogue. It's better to work on the scene development. It's better to work on the character outline. Do as much as you can. Keep a journal so that so that you're not procrastinating the learning process. Because even if you try to skip ahead or you wait too long, you're still procrastinating the learning process. And that's what procrastination basically is. And so they give the streets more authority. The people on the streets, all of the people on the streets are homeless just like them. And they're giving them more authority. Do they have authority in the uh, present? OK, if you ask them, where's the best place to uh, to pitch a tent and they tell you, oh, here's the best place to pitch a tent. Yeah, they have authority. Right. However, they don't have authority about how to live life as a stable um, individual long term, because they would rather continue to stay in the current situation that they're in than to actually say, hey, I got to I, I, I can't do this anymore. I just I, I just can't do this anymore. So the person does not have to, they don't, when they live on the streets, they don't have to comply with authority, which is ironic because many, there have been many street sweeps of uh, throwing away the homeless, uh, homeless people's uh, camps, uh, the, uh, the camping. All these homeless encampments now are under fire. Many of the local local governments, uh, mayors and managers are now making decisions about these homeless encampments and that, um, like in San Diego, I know for sure that if there is an open bed in a shelter, you have to go in there. Like you, you have to go. If you don't go, they're going to give you a ticket or send you to jail. Right. Uh, and so even though there's this idea that if I live freely and I just live homeless and I live freely and I don't really have to um, 
respect rules or anything like that, eventually you're going to have to comply with authority because you don't own the city property. You don't own the land. And so anyone can ask you to leave. So um, the person gives the streets more credibility. As long as I can pitch a tent on this street or this street or this street, this street, this street then I then I'm good. I don't need to have a place. But then one uh, one night on the street turns into two, two turns into months, months turn into years, and you realize you've been living on the streets for 20 years. So with this situation, you can't do anything because if they give more authority to instability and unstable living and you have authority on stable living and stability, the two of you are going to clash. And that's why these... Uh, situations tend to turn tragic because you take in somebody who doesn't believe what you believe. You are taking in somebody who who has already voiced to you that we're not going to listen to you and it doesn't matter what you say and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. You can't have that person in your house. You can't even have really that person in your life. It's going to be dangerous.